Now, before going to the walk-in clinic, after you roll your ankle running, there is actually a decision-making process to get you back to running faster after rolling your ankle. So today, I am going to share with you the steps you need to determine if you have a sprained ankle or a broken ankle so you can get back to running and spend less time and money at the doctor's office. I'm Dr. Dwayne Scotty, avid half marathoner, running physical therapist, coach, host of this Healthy Runner podcast, and founding owner and creator of Spark Healthy Runner, where we help runners get stronger, run faster, and enjoy lifelong injury-free running with the perfect online running coach, even if you've been told to stop running with an injury. Before we get into how an ankle sprain occurs and how do we rule out a broken ankle or a fracture, and if you actually need an x-ray, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to this podcast or YouTube channel, wherever you're listening, or better yet, if you find this content helpful, the only ask I um, request, if you don't mind, is if you can just copy this link and share it with a running friend who can use this help so we can help reach more runners and get them back on the road quicker without worrying that they are going to do harm to their ankle. So how does an ankle sprain occur? An ankle sprain occurs when we roll our ankle, right? So you could be running on uneven pavement. Um, You could run over a rock. You could be trying to avoid a small animal if you're running on trails um, that kind of scurries by you and you take a misstep. Um, Or if you're running on trails and you have all of those roots and you're trying to avoid a route and you just step wrong. And it's usually when our ankle is kind of pointed downward. So we're actually have a, what we call plantar flexed ankle, the ankle is pointed down. So especially if you are a toe runner or a four foot striker and you strike with your ankle and a lot of what we call plantar flexion, then you're going to be a little bit more at risk for rolling your ankles. And we do know that that pattern or running form has the greatest likelihood for actually spraining your ankle. Um, So there is a specific event that happens um, of you rolling your ankle on the outside. That is how you sprain your ankle. You don't just sprain your ankle by kind of overdoing things on a run or overdoing things in the gym. It actually needs to be a specific event where your ankle basically rolls. It does this, it goes inward. All right. And you will know this happens. Um, And the reason why the ankle actually has a tendency to roll when our ankle is plantar flexed or pointed down is because this is the most unstable position of the ankle the surrounding muscles are not as strong in that position. They don't provide enough support. Um, And, you know, this is the position that you will unfortunately kind of sprain your ankle. So what is an ankle sprain? An ankle sprain simply means that we are stretching or overstretching or tearing the ligaments on the outside part of your ankle. So there are three different grades of what we call lateral ankle sprains. A grade one ankle sprain is when the ligaments are simply overstretched. A grade two ankle sprain is where there is some tearing of the ligament or ligaments, but there's not full separation. A grade three is a severe ankle sprain where the ligaments completely tear and there is little or no stability at the joint anymore. Um, ankle sprains can involve one ligament or a combination of ligaments. So let's talk about that anatomy and what are these ligaments that I'm talking about on the outside part of the ankle. So I'm going to use my little demonstration here, and this is the outside part of your ankle. So this would be a left foot that we're looking at. We got the big toe over here, little toe over here, and the outside part of your ankle is made up of your fibula bone. So that is the skinny bone in the shin. It's not the main bone, your tibia bone. And what connects that fibula bone to your actual foot and ankle portion is ligaments. So there are three of them. And you can vaguely see probably by my little demonstration here 
is we have three ligaments. The first ligament runs from the front part of the fibula and goes to the talus bone. So this is your anterior talofibular ligament or your ETF ligament, we call it, or ETFL. And this is the most commonly sprained um, ligament. So this is kind of the first to go. And this provides some stability and prevents us from rolling our ankle. That's what our ligaments do. They basically connect bone to bone and they provide stability at the joint. The second ligament, which is going to be, if you can see, I, I kind of put a little orange highlighter, connects the fibula to the calcaneal bone. So your big heel bone here. And that provides stability right on the side of the ankle. And that's our calcaneofibular ligament. And usually that's the second most commonly involved ligament. And then the one that is not very common is your posterior talofibular ligament, which goes from the back of this fibula and connects to the back part of the talus bone. So that's your PTFL, um, which usually isn't uh, involved as much, but that is the third ligament. And the three of these are known as like the LCL ligaments or the lateral collateral ligaments of the ankle. And for today's purposes, we're going to be talking about the most common ankle sprain, which is the inversion ankle sprain. Could you actually suffer what we call an eversion ankle sprain? Um, yes, though that is highly rare. And that would involve ligaments on the inside part of your ankle. And we know for most runners who have pain on the inside part of their ankle, it's usually the posterior tibial tendon, and it is usually more of an overuse injury. However, if you've had a traumatic incident where your foot went kind of inward like this, and you have pain on the inside part of your ankle, you may have sprained those what we call medial ligaments. Um, but we're going to be focusing on the most common ligaments on the outside part of your ankle. Now, if you sprain your ankle, what are the signs and symptoms that you are going to have? Um, the common signs of symptoms is going to be swelling. Swelling is kind of one of those first um, you know, signs that you are going to see is, and usually this is not the full foot and ankle, especially if it's a grade one or a grade two ankle sprain. This is going to be a localized little pocket of swelling on the outside part of your ankle. You could also have tenderness if we touch the injured ligament. So if you touch right below that bone, then you can have some tenderness there. We can also start to see some bruising along the outside part of the foot and ankle. Usually that is associated with more of a grade two and grade three. So a more severe ankle sprain where you'll see that bruising. It looks black and blue on the outside. Um, you can also feel unstable. The ankle just feels loose right? It doesn't feel stable. You're kind of a little nervous to put weight on it. Um, and then as we go along in the recovery process, and we're going to be talking about the recovery process, you could feel stiffness and difficulty with moving your foot and an ankle. And then the other sign would be difficulty or inability to actually put weight through the foot. So now let's talk about diagnosis. And if you sprain your ankle, you'll see some of those common signs and symptoms. You'll have pain on the outside part of your ankle. Um, you'll have some swelling that's localized as we talked about, and it will be difficult for you to move your foot and ankle. Now, if you cannot put weight on your foot or you have bony tenderness, meaning the bones on the outside part of your foot and ankle are tender, specifically this fibula bone where that tip is on the outside part of the ankle. If that is tender and painful, the biggest thing we need to do at this point in time is to rule out a fracture or a broken bone. Um, how do we determine this? And you know, if it is just a simple sprain or fracture, um, we utilize something called the Ottawa ankle rules. So this has been validated. Um, this is what they use in the ED or ER. Most of the time, most physical therapists will do this. This is what I've utilized throughout my career. And I did a lot of on-site um, assessments when I used to work in the gymnastics gym, as well as the dance studio. Ankle sprains not only are common in runners, but they're the most common injury that we see in dancers and gymnasts. So I've had a lot of experience screening ankles and wondering, what do we do? Do we send this 
out for an x-ray or is this a sprain and they don't need to go get an x-ray? Um, so this, I really want to kind of um, clarify this for you because if you have, you roll your ankle, you're having pain and you can't take steps or walk on your ankle at all, or you can walk on your ankle, but the bone itself is tender. And this is the most common bone that you're going to fracture is this kind of lower part of your fibula. However, you could also have a midfoot uh, sprain and or a midfoot fracture of this fifth metatarsal. This can be in a little avulsion fracture. So if your pain is lower in the foot area and same rules apply, you can't put weight on it and or you touch the bone, not so much the ligament, but the bone is really tender to touch, then we need to actually get an x-ray or a radiograph um, to rule out a fracture. That's the only way that you're going to be able to do that reliably because you want to make sure that if it is fractured, then we need to immobilize that sucker, um, usually for six weeks in a walking boot. Um, you don't want to go walking around on a bone that is fractured because that is going to impair the healing process. However, 90% or 80% of ankle sprains, um, probably more than that, I don't know what the exact number is, is going to be a simple ankle sprain and is not going to be a fracture. Um, so you really want to think about that is if you can't put weight on it immediately after it occurs and or the bone is tender, then you need to actually make an appointment at the walking clinic and they have x-rays there, get it x-rayed. It's always a safe bet. However, if you're walking on it, it's painful and there's some swelling, but you're able to walk on it and the bone itself isn't tender. There's really no need for you to waste your time, money, resources to go. Definitely do not go to the emergency room um, because usually the management is not the greatest um, there in terms of, you know, classifying the type of ankle sprain. They just want to make sure it's not fractured. And usually they give you a walking boot or they give you an air cast and they'll say, wear this until it's not painful anymore. Take it off. If you still have issues, go to your doctor, go to your physical therapist. What most you know, people do, and I've seen a lot of these patients throughout my career, is they immobilize themselves in those devices thinking that that is going to actually heal the ankle sprain, when in fact, that is probably the worst thing for the majority of ankle sprains is to immobilize too long. And then that really impairs you from getting back to running and what you love to do. So it really all depends upon, you know, do we think there's a fracture? Let's utilize those Ottawa ankle rules and go get a radiograph if you can't put weight on it and or the bone itself is tender. But if it is a sprain, you do not need to go, definitely do not go to the emergency room, the ED, um, you could, and you don't need to go to a walk-in clinic for a simple radiograph. Um, so those are very, very important. I really want to kind of stress that if it is a simple ankle sprain, um, you know, from there, you're going to go see your doctor or your physical therapist, and they'll be able to actually do an evaluation and diagnose an ankle sprain. So if you could walk on it after you rolled it and you don't have that tenderness right on the outside of the bone, then you don't need an x-ray. And most likely it's a sprain at this point, make an appointment. Um, I highly recommend a local running physical therapist to properly diagnose it on your specific scenario and your specific grade of an ankle sprain to get going on treatment. So now let's talk about prognosis. So you've been diagnosed with this ankle sprain and you know, you want to know how long does it take to recover, right? How long is it going to be until I can get back on the pavement doing what I love? You know, when can I start running, right? In terms of prognosis and recovery and getting back to running, it's going to be variable, meaning it really depends. And I know we don't like that answer because no two ankle sprains are the same and no two rehabilitation programs should be the same. It is going to depend on how many ligaments are involved as well as did you sprain one ligament or did you sprain two ligaments? Is it a grade one or a grade three? And it's also going to depend upon if you could have what we call a displaced fibula, where when you roll your ankle, the actual ligaments did their job and kept the ankle nice and stable, but they actually subluxed 
your fibula slightly forward. So we've seen a lot of these patients throughout my career where that uh, fibula is just sitting forward and it creates pain when you roll your ankle in. And there are some simple mobilization techniques that we can do to help that and restore mobility in your ankle so you can actually point it in without pain to restore that mobility. So, you know, that's kind of the, the big things as far as it's going to depend. Um, but if there is a mobility issue, as opposed to just overstretching the ligament, once your healthcare provider has determined exactly what's going on with your ankle sprain, you will be able to have an idea of your prognosis and get started on rehabbing the ankle. And, you know, rehab of an ankle sprain, guys, is not the end of the world. Okay. So if you rolled your ankle and you're just like bummed out right now, you're like, oh my goodness, like I'm not going to be able to run my goal race. I am not going to be able to do this half marathon. I'm not going to be able to do this marathon. All my training has been for nothing. Um, that is not the case whatsoever. The majority of ankle sprains are going to heal quite nicely if you get the proper treatment. And it all depends upon the severity of your ankle sprain. So through proper rehab with your running physical therapist, you will be back to full strength and performing at your best. Now, coming up next, I'm going to actually be talking about the initial management and a hack that will get your mobility back quicker. So stay tuned for that. Before, before we get into that, um, go ahead and like this video and comment below what questions do you have for me about the management of ankle sprains? Let me know in the comments below, and maybe we will answer your questions in the next video or Healthy Runner podcast episode. So now let's get into rehab phase one. This is going to be the initial management of how, what you should do after you roll your ankle, essentially. So we've ruled out a fracture. It's not a fracture. So now what do you do? Um, you're right off the injury. You've just been diagnosed with an ankle sprain. You have some swelling and maybe it's painful to walk and it's hard to move. So what should you be doing during this initial phase or what we'll call the maximum protection phase? So we're protecting it maximally right? It's like max protect. Um, if you think like max protect defense, if for those football fans out there, um, we're going to want to follow the acronym price mem M E M. So for this, we're doing P is going to be for protection. So we're protecting the ligament, which could involve stabilizing it with maybe a walking boot. If it's a grade three ligament sprain, maybe an air cast, if it's probably a grade two, maybe an ACE bandage, maybe some taping, maybe just avoiding rolling your ankle in, right? So protection is going to matter depending upon the severity, um, but it's not an all blanket statement saying you need to be wearing an air cast for 10 days or 14 days or three weeks, right? This is going to depend, but in general, we want to protect the ligament and prevent it from rolling in and creating some more trauma and adding more swelling, right? Because swelling is occurring at this point in our healing cycle, and we are looking to minimize that and allow your tissues, meaning the ligaments to progress to the next phase of healing. The next phase of healing is our ligament starts to throw down some collagen and helps heal. So that's stimulating that healing process. The other thing we want to do is R in the price mem acronym is going to stand for rest. Now, does this mean laying on the couch, watching Netflix, doing nothing? No, it does not. This means actually resting from the aggravating factors. So right now during this phase, and this phase is going to actually depend upon the severity. This could be one to three days. It could be five days. It could be up to 10 days. Definitely not longer than that. Um, so we're thinking that range from one to 10 days. And I've seen, you know, patients during my career, you know, progress to the next phase after a day or two, and sometimes get right back to sport. 
And then I've seen others where it takes a week and a half to progress to the next phase that we're going to talk about. So this is active rest. So if weight bearing and running is off the tables during these couple of days or this week of healing, then possibly you can cycle. And as long as that's not painful, then you can certainly go ahead and do that. Perhaps you can get in the pool and do some swimming. Um, the other thing is we want to actually kind of, when we'll talk about this on the specific exercise, but we're thinking active rest, not complete bed rest. The I on price is going to be ice. So this is where we actually do want to ice. After this phase, there's no point in icing your ankle whatsoever. So if you're past this, you know, couple of days, week, longest 10 days, there's absolutely no reason to be icing your ankle. So please stop doing that right now. Um, I've seen that in many different clinics over the years um, that I've been in. Um, there's really no point in icing the ankle unless you're looking for pain relief. But a lot of times at that phase, weeks out, we're trying to improve mobility and there's no real reason to ice it um, and make someone feel stiffer when you've tried to actually promote mobility. Um, the C is going to be for compression. So here's where we do want to use perhaps an ACE bandage. Um, they make some really good ones now at all of your local pharmacies where you don't need like those clips or anything that kind of like stick on each other. Um, and this is where you can do a good spica wrap. Um, especially if there's a lot of swelling. So this is where, you know, your provider can do kind of a crisscross pattern. Um, I will also try to actually create a video for you guys on showing how to do that. And I will drop that in the link below, um, or I'll link that, uh, to this on how to actually do a nice ACE wrap, um, for your ankle. And then the E part of this is elevation. An elevation, it's not simply sitting in your office chair and putting your foot up on like, you know, your trash can. That's not going to do it. It is elevation above heart level. So you need to lay on your back, put your foot up on a bunch of pillows, or the easiest way to do this is if you lie on your back on your sofa, throw your leg up on like the back of the sofa. So now your foot and your ankle is going to be higher than your heart level. And that will help pull some of that fluid back down to be reabsorbed. Um, the M stands for manual therapy and specifically what, you know, as a clinician, what we can do here is really to focus on decreasing swelling. So here's where some massage can come into play. Um, we might even focus on some slight mobility and some gentle joint mobilization techniques. Um, we might do some of that mobilization with movement that I mentioned before, if you have that fibula bone that's slightly pushed forward. This is where that will come into play. It's all pain-free though. Um, this shouldn't be painful during this phase. And then the E stands for early motion. And that's really key. And that's where things have changed, you know, in the last 10 to 20 years. Because I remember when I first graduated PT school, um, almost 20 years ago now, you know, everyone used to be immobilized in an air cast or a walking boot for two, three, four weeks. Um, now we know that is not the standard treatment that is not going to be best for you getting back to running um, in the shortest amount of time. And honestly, it's not going to be the best for even stimulating healing of your tissues. We know the early motion is necessary to actually progress in those phases of healing. And then the M is going to stand for medication. So this is where you actually want to perhaps take some anti-inflammatory medication. Give my disclaimer that you've taken anti-inflammatory medications. Check with your doctor. Make sure you don't have any stomach pain. Um, you haven't had a history of ulcers and that you can take anti-inflammatory medication. So kind of your um, ibuprofen, you know, your naproxen, your Aleves, your Advil, right? Motrin, those types of medications. That is what is going to help from an anti-inflammatory standpoint. Tylenol, aspirin will not do it. Um, those won't address the inflammation. So pain relief, if you need the pain relief, you can do Tylenol. But if we want the anti-inflammatory effect, then you have to do one of those that I mentioned. But make sure you check with your doctor, make sure it's safe for you to uh, take those. Um, so our main goal during this first phase of rehab is going to decrease swelling, get your mobility going in the ankle, and do some muscle activation exercises. So we do not want to forget about the muscles in the leg as well. So upper, 
above the uh, foot and ankle um, after an ankle sprain. So some general mobility exercise for the ankle. And this is really going to be kind of the hack that we talked about before is during these initial phases, take it out of the air cast, take it out of the boot, take it out of the, um, you know, a strap. You are not going to hurt your ankle by doing some gentle non-weight bearing. So you're laying down and you're literally pumping your ankle gently up and down. That is going to be completely safe for you. That is not going to make your ankle sprain any worse. Um, if it's painful to point it in, do not do that in this initial phase. If it's not painful and you want to kind of stay behind pain, do a little movement in and out of your foot and ankle, that's totally fine, right? That is going to be a good thing to kind of get some early motion in that ankle. Um, the other thing is, deep foot muscles, um, doing our deep foot muscles in a sitting position with your foot on the ground, not weight bearing to start. You can start to do our short foot exercises. And I will link, um, how to actually activate the deep foot muscles below. And this is a great time period, especially if you're a runner and you've never done your intrinsic foot muscles and don't know how to activate them. And this is something that I've really started to do on a daily basis. And I've absolutely loved it. Um, we did a previous podcast episode with Dr. Emily Splickle um, talking about how to activate your foot muscles. And I will actually link that episode as well um, with this uh, video. And it is so important for you as a runner to stabilize that foot and ankle. And this is a great time period to actually do that and focus on it. So if you haven't in the past, this is like one of those things of what are you going to get out on the other side of spraining your ankle? Hey, I started to learn how to activate my deep foot muscles because it's totally safe for you to do this during this time phase of healing. The other thing that you can't forget about is as a runner, hips don't lie, right? Our hip muscles are our workhorse. They're the most important muscles we have in our body. Specifically, the three hip muscles that are most important is glute max, right? The big beefy guy in the back, the glute medius muscle, your side hip muscle helps keep our pelvis level when we're standing on one leg while we're running. And then the one that is often not talked about ever um, and gets forgotten about is our deep hip external rotator muscles. The biggest one of those is your piriformis muscle. You've probably heard that term before, um, but we need to make sure that we, if you've never done these before, learn how to activate these muscles. And if you've done them before, you've been working them out, you're part of our healthy runner community. You have the healthy runner strength program. You've been in our coaching programs before, you know how to work these muscles, right? So this is to actually maintain your strength while you are recovering from this ankle sprain and you're not able to do your normal strengthening exercises. You're not able to do your normal running routine for a couple of days or perhaps a week or two at this phase. So that is where you want to double down on your hip strengthening in a non-weight bearing position. It will not put any stress on your ankle and you can still get some exercise, which can also make you feel good, right? We can kind of get that mental release of doing our exercises um, so very, very important thing. So when you sprain your ankle guys, not the end of the world, it doesn't mean I shut everything down. Woe is me. You're depressed. You're, you can't run, you can't exercise. And now you just have to wait for the doctor to say, okay, you're two weeks out after your ankle sprain. Now you can go to physical therapy, or now you can try to walk, see if it's painful. If it's painful, wait another week or try to run see if it's painful. If it's painful, wait another week. No, that is not going to be the solution for you. Um, you need to do pain-free movement, mobility, muscle activation. All right. That is going to help you heal faster and get you back to what you love, which is running. Now, remember the phase, this first phase of rehab and healing of an ankle sprain after you roll your ankle is going to be variable depending upon the severity, number of ligaments involved. And I mentioned before that this typically is one to three days after you roll your ankle, but it can be up to a week or even in severe cases, 10 days. So it's going to really depend upon you getting a proper diagnosis and prognosis. So if you are struggling with reoccurring ankle sprains, and this isn't your first, 
This has happened to you many times before. And you want to get your ankle stronger so you don't have to worry about rolling your ankle on your next run. That is exactly what we help runners do with our Healthy Runner Coaching Program. We help them get stronger, run faster, and become lifelong injury-free runners with our 16-week one-on-one Healthy Runner Coaching Program. So you can get support, structure, and accountability from experts in the health and running industry. Uh, myself, as your running physical therapist, our run coaching team, who is made up of fitness professionals, personal trainers. We have a nutrition for runners, our registered dietitian, Brooke, and we have um, run coaches. We have athletic trainer. So we have the support you need to be able to either get over an injury, get over an ache and pain or a niggle, or just take your running to the next level. And you want to actually learn how to get faster, but also stay healthy on the other side. So we're not going to like have you just get faster just to get you a PR and to hit your goal race. And who cares what happens in six months from now or a year from now? Our goal is lifelong injury-free running. So you can enjoy doing what you love, just like I love you know, running and I need it for the mental release. I want to do it till I'm literally in the box. I want that for all of you. So if you want to learn more about our behind the scenes, um, you know, coaching program, I did a video for you all about our coaching program. You can hear from many of the athletes who have been through our program before and have struggled with the same sticking points that you are. You can head to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash coaching. And if you enjoyed this video, then you are going to enjoy our next video and podcast episode on how to recover and prevent reoccurring ankle sprains as a runner. So that's going to help you get stronger and kind of, we're going to talk about phase two and phase three of the ankle sprain rehab, and then how to actually prevent it from coming back. That is going to be key. So either stick around and queue up episode 125 on the Healthy Runner podcast if you're listening during your run or click on that video now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you on the next one. Now let's stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running. Until next time.